Hi, this is Steve, the 6WZ. I'd like to show the new circuit board that I uh, designed and uh, built for the nine uh, circle receiver array by the YCC Contest Club, um, the nine circle array. Uh, they use these high impedance, high Z amplifiers. And I've uh, done a circuit board redesign and the main changes electrically really are nothing more than adding a relay, a small 12 volt uh, uh, Omron relay, which is uh, used to bypass the vertical to ground, the actual receive vertical to ground during transmit using the PTT line in order to eliminate any possibility for RF overload from the transmit antenna or at the same time eliminate po any possibility of electrical uh, damage or even uh, wind static damage uh, because as long as the uh, amplifiers are turned off they're not going to be uh, the, the vertical they'll you know they'll be isolated from the vertical uh, one other thing I did do was added a IC socket though so you can switch out the IC if you have a problem you know some could argue there's some uh, some risk there in an outdoor environment but I'm going to give it a whirl uh, you know probably the bigger uh, change too is is the geometry that I've used for this board compared to the original design I've used a vertical F connector mounted directly on the board and my uh, terminals for the antenna for the vertical are mounted directly uh, onto the board and the screws are clamped right on so that you know when we you know we basically take the lid of a box and we you know drill out the holes in the box and we can literally just mount this uh, mount this guy on there and and you know and then you know in the box you know it's pretty pretty simple deployment in the field you know we just zip tie that to the base of the vertical and connect our ground and uh, antenna to the to each terminal and and we're good to go uh, I'm going to show you how to build these things uh, what I, I'm going to do is include at the end of the video a link to um, the uh, file, a PCB file that I, I, I made using KiCad and using that file you, you should be able to just upload the file to uh, any number of circuit board manufacturing companies. I'll show you the one I use, OSH Park, and you know in, in a few days you'll, you'll get your boards in the mail. They cost about seven dollars each. You have to order three at a time but you know so 21 bucks for uh, three boards. So uh, you know pretty affordable and pretty easy to do. You know I'm gonna uh, also provide a um, a bill of materials list. I just exported this out of DigiKey. That's who I use to order my parts and uh, you know, presumably you could upload this to your own uh, preferred vendor. Uh, I include everything on the list, uh, you know, even the plastic box and the inductors, the, the ferrite core, uh, uh, the IC, the sockets, and, and, and everything's on here. And, and you know, but uh, what I've done was, uh, you know, I summed it up and it's around 25 US dollars uh, per board for all of the parts and the board itself, so around seven bucks. But, you know, that's it without doing any kind of bulk purchase. You know, if you sort of bought enough to do 10, 10 amps, you know, you could get that well below uh, $30 uh, uh, per, per board. So anyway, um, I think as I, I know as I've shown before in my other videos, so this is one of the, oh by the way, you know, um, the benefit of, uh, of this approach too, I think I did mention is, you know, mounting these vertically, um, I, what, what I think it does, well I know what it does is it prevents this twisting, you know, this, this particular geometry uh, that was designed by, uh, that we got uh, with the original boards, you know, you can try and tighten that nut as much as you can, but it'll still tend to rotate when you tighten it, I find. Uh, which isn't a huge deal, but it's it, you know it's a bit awkward. So you know using using uh, this method mounted on the, on the lid and and with this 90 degree um, F connector, you know you you can tighten that nut as much as you want, and it's not gonna not gonna twist. And the same is true with the uh, antenna terminals. So anyway, um, here set up on the on the bench is the original um, uh, designed board. Um, uh, you know, I have my signal generator uh, bringing in uh, uh, my signal at uh, 160 meters, uh, 1825 kilohertz, and the scoped scoped out on the um, on the on the yellow trace, and the output is on the blue trace, and uh, it's it's uh, so it, it, this it ends up being inverting, as it was pointed out to me after my sub first video. This is this this transformer is wired such that it inverts the output. But if I if I invert the, the traces, you'll see that they're perfect unity gain and perfectly um, uh, in phase. Uh, so I'll just pop this out, and we'll just put uh, the the new design in. Just takes a second here because I got to make sure I get the right terminals in. And I have, I have this uh, RF choke in here together with uh, a bypass capacitor or a blocking capacitor rather because you know I've, I need to put uh, 12 volts onto the line and as soon as the 12 volts is introduced uh, onto the line uh, that activates the relay as I said so and uh, provides power to, uh, to the amplifier. Let me make sure I have the antenna. <laughs> And the ground hooked up right. So you know, there we have them, uh, you know, connect up, connected up to the uh, to the scope, and 
you know, you can see that they're uh, uh, as, as it should be. By the way, with the IC socket here, uh, I've been able to uh, pull out that, that IC and replace it with uh, a whole raft of different, uh, the same unit, but, but other units. And every time it's a perfect unity uh, uh, gain and uh, absolutely no uh, phase distortion at all. So, okay, hey, let's uh, have a little chat here about how I put these together and some of the tricks I, I, I use for assembling them. So this is the schematic of the high impedance amplifier designed, as I said, by John W1 Fox Victor. And this is uh, documentation is available online, not just for the amplifier, but for the entire receive array. I'll include a link to that uh, at the bottom of uh, this video so you can uh, look it up uh, yourself. As I say, I've changed nothing to this design. It's a, it's a great proven performer. It's been a great amplifier other than the recent problem I've had with that coupling capacitor. I've since changed that uh, voltage rating, so I've now uh, replaced that with a 600 uh, volt unit. But the other thing I did change on my uh, circuit design, as I've already explained, is I've added a relay. And that relay uh, is attached to the antenna input and is normally grounded. And when the relay becomes active through the 12 volts on the feed line to power up the amp, then the relay opens and the, uh, the amplifier is, uh, is fully functional. Um, I use a program called KeyCAD and I needed to create this schematic, and but mostly only to import it to the PCB uh, creation file or program so I could build the PCB layout. But you can see the relay is included here and as, I, as I've shown it's normally closed and when it's powered up it will, uh, it will open. Um, if you decided you didn't want to use that relay, you felt you didn't want to bother with it, you didn't feel you needed it, um, uh, you know, it's only about $3, by the way, uh, of added cost for the relay and the associated snubber diode and the capacitor. But you just eliminate that and, the, you know, the, the device will function uh, just fine. Um, it, but what you could also do is using the pinout on the PC board, if you wanted to include, say, a gas discharge tube or a neon bulb to dissipate any high energy events, you could just connect that from pin 5 to pin 9, which is ground. So you could, you know, kind of use this, uh, the pinout on the board for, for adding that if you wanted to. Uh, by the way, this uh, GS5 uh, relay, you know, it's got a 5 millisecond close and release time. So, you know, when you're operating your PTT on your transmitter, when it uh, drops, the, uh, drops the voltage on transmit uh, to release the relay and ground the, uh, ground the antenna, you know, make sure you've got enough TX delay uh, on, your, um, on your transmitter so that, you know, you're not, uh, you know, you've got to make sure this relay's had time to close. So these high z amplifiers do require a transformer, a one-to-one -one, uh, matching transformer and uh, or coupling transformer. And you know, whenever a lot of people see transformers in circuits, they start to run for the hills. But you know, winding a transformer is pretty darn easy. I'll just show you very quickly how to do it. In this case, we need uh, two bits of wire, uh, ten inches long. Uh, you know, ten inches turns out to be just what we need, and we're trying to. Uh, ultimately end up with five turns on one side and five turns on the other. So it's a one-to-one -one transformer. And the way we wind them, I use two different colors wire and I like to use this wire wrap wire which is uh, readily available. It's really tough and easy to, easy to work with. But so we basically run it through our, our binocular core and once we go through like that, out and back, that's one turn. So then we just keep going along, just threading the needle. That's one turn and then we come back the other way and that's now two turns. We go back the other way. And when we come then back home again, that's three turns. We can go back through again. And that's four, four turns when we're back. And one more is going to be five turns. And the trick you can use here to, in case you lose count, if you count on this side, the opposing side, you'll count five loops. And that way you know there's five turns on that side. Then for our uh, secondary, or whatever we call it, is we'll uh, basically run it through the other way, because it comes out the other side, and we just do exactly the same thing. We run it through, one turn, and so on and so forth. I, I won't finish it because it's just going to take too much time. But then, and basically that's, and you just run it through until you've got five turns uh, on both sides. And, and that's a real simple and quick way to make these transformers. Don't be afraid of them, real easy to build. So when you get these boards, well, I should say when I received my boards from the place I ordered them from, uh, OSH Park, uh, they come with these little titty edges here on the end, these little, I don't know if you can see them, there are these little sharp pointy edges on, on the boards. I just cut them off with a pair of side cutters uh, just to uh, level off the little, the little uh, points on them. Uh, they all they all have them when they when they come uh, when they come to you. 
basically you proceed along then and, and just solder in uh, all of your parts and nothing really special um, of note uh, just solder them all in um, what I did choose to do was on the transformer I chose to put some double-sided tape to sort of lock the transformer in there just to perhaps avoid any vibration putting stress on the leads the solder leads into the um, uh, onto the board. Um, now, the other thing to be very aware of and very careful is when you solder the F connector on, make sure that you're soldering that board, that uh, that uh, connector on the uh, underside. That is to say, on the solder side, not on the main silkscreen side. Because, of course, you want that ultimately to be, you know, when you mount it on the box. That's I, I want the components to be on the outside. If you're following me here. So you want to make sure you mount that F connector the, the right direction. The other thing you're going to do is make sure the screws uh, for the antenna and ground connection are also um, uh, attached to the same side so that ultimately they're going to be mounted on the box. And I just add some nuts here as a strain relief at the, at the, uh, at the right point. So what I do, by the way, to lay out the box, again, I just showed you how that's mounted. So to drill out the box, I'll make sure that I just, I use the board itself as a guide and I'll just place it on there and make sure that it's centered centered on the board. These, if, the, if the board still has these little ticks on it, if you ordered it from the same place I did, it sort of lines itself up because it just fits inside there. I'll then use a marker to mark out the, 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 the drill point for the F connector and the point, the, the drill outs for the two uh, number eight stainless screws. And basically, you know, I mean, I have a drill press, but gosh, you know, you drill that out with a, with a, uh, with a hand drill, uh, no problem at all. Then what we do is, um, we use uh, number uh, one inch uh, number eight stainless steel screws, uh, you know, with their uh, uh, associated nut. We tighten them on real tight. Um, I didn't bother to use a lock washer. You could if you wanted. I just wanted to maintain maximum electrical con connectivity. Uh, then what I've done as well, um, I've used a, a conformal coating on these things. Uh, you know, there's lots of different ones. I've used a uh, you know, an acrylic type uh, conformal coating uh, on the um, underside of the board, on the solder side of the board. What I do is uh, I, I basically mask the, the screws off as well as the connector off with black electrical tape and then I'll just spray it with the conformal coating. I mean, you know, you could buy paint on coating, which would be good. I mean, you know, you don't have to do that. My, my feeling and rationale for that is, you know, these boards are going to be outside and here in Canada, we can get, you know, heavy frost in the winter, which frost turns to water when it melts. And I'd, I'd rather uh, do everything I can to avoid corrosion uh, on, on the boards. The other thing that you want to do uh, on the board as well is, you know, make sure that, you know, you drill um, on the bottom of the box uh, a couple of drain holes, just, just a couple of, uh, I use one eighth inch drill holes on the bottom so that when you know, then when you mount, you know, you make sure you mount the, board, the box vertically so any condensation in the box will uh, drain out. The other thing I will do is take some black electrical tape and just seal uh, with a strip of tape along the top just to prevent any w water ingress there. I mean, anything that does get in will drain out, but I, I think it's best to try and minimize it. The other thing I'll do with the F connector in the field when I attach it, I'll um, inject uh, some silicon grease, and proper silicon grease into the uh, F connector, almost fill it up, and then, and then make, the, make the connection. Uh, th that prevents any kind of uh, water ingress or will limit it because, of course, if the connector's already infused with the silicon, you can't get any more water in there. I'll tighten the connector very well and then I'll also add some black electrical tape to the uh, outside of the connection. You know, m be aware, don't use um, like Vaseline or p petroleum jelly in here because what can happen, especially in a warm climate, it basically turns to liquid and it'll just run out. That's why the silicon grease is the, is the preferred... Uh, material for that. Anyway, that's the quick and dirty how do you construct the basic uh, amplifier units. So as I showed earlier, I used uh, KiCad to uh, lay out the PC board and in order to do that I needed to create the schematic uh, in this program called uh, KiCad and then uh, assigning the appropriate footprints uh, and um, building what's called a netlist file, I was able to uh, then export it to the uh, actual PCB layout uh, part of the KiCad program. And it's in here where I was able to, um, you know, place the footprints where I wanted them, space out the components as we needed, and uh, lay out the, uh, the traces. I also have a low impedance ground plane on the uh, top layer. Is a, uh, the full PC board on the top is one... Um, one solid uh, a ground plane and the actual traces are on the underside uh, 
uh, of the board. Um, the other kind of cool thing with this is you, you uh, with KiCad, you can, um, this is a free program, by the way, um, there's a thing called view, and you actually can provide a 3D view of the board. So this is what the board looks like, and, and I can uh, actually rotate it with my, uh, my mouse so you can see both sides. And the beauty of it, uh, you know, if you access the program like this, is you can actually, when you're finished with the board, you can really inspect it and make sure everything is... Um, uh, exactly how you uh, exactly how you want it. Anyway, once you're done this, you save this as a uh, it's a it gets saved as a file it's called a .keycad PCB file, and uh, I've saved that and up uploaded it. And um, uh, indeed, that's the link that I'll show uh, uh, below here, and it'll be a if a file called HiZ Preamp underscore v six w z. Anyway, uh, download that file and save it somewhere on your computer. Then what you do is navigate to this company. Well, okay, now here's the thing. This is the company I use. It's a company called OSH Park out of the U.S. Um, you know, look, you could probably get these boards made uh, out of somewhere out of China, maybe for less. Um, likely, I don't know. Um, I find these guys. You know, I like their products. I uh, ordered a bunch from them, and they're, they're, it's really nice. And um, you know, they're quick, quick turnaround as well. Uh, but also, they they will take KiCad files directly. So anyway, this is actually their splash page. As soon as you go to oshpark.com, you come to this, and you notice this is browse for files. So you press browse for the file, and and then navigate on your computer to wherever you save that file that I've uh, given you the uh, link to it, and it'll upload them and pro I'm doing this in real time just so you can see you know it's a pretty simple process here and it basically takes the files in and then we'll uh, adequately process them and get them ready for making your choice to uh, to have them um, uh, shipped and you know for some reason you know I don't know maybe other companies will do this but you know they they import this one file has everything the Gerber files the drill files the silk screen everything is is included so anyway it comes up like this and you can see a picture of what you plan to do and then you just press continue and uh, you know it shows you exactly what the bottom of the board is going to look like and what the you know the top and shows you with the drills and the solder mask and the outline and the silk screen layers and here's my the top layer which is my ground plane and anyway it shows everything you need and then you basically just go to order and you know um, again you know in this case you you have to order at least three um, but uh, a minimum of three but you know if you're building a nine circle you're going to want nine anyway but they're $21 for three and depending on your shipping and you'll see as you go along here you can choose different shipping methods you can get free shipping by mail which I've done it's a little bit slow but they show up in a couple weeks and and uh, and, and you know and it's great um, so anyway uh, that's that's how you go ahead and order the order the boards now I haven't designed the boards here for the phase and the switch box. I mean, if you wanted to build yourself a complete entire nine circle receiver array, uh, DX Engineering no longer sells those uh, devices. Um, I mean, I already had my phase box and and uh, sw switching box that was included with my package. But uh, look, go to this these guys, uh, Papa India 4 Charlie Charlie. I'll include that link, but I mean, you just Google PI4 Charlie Charlie. And look, they have uh, a full uh, nine circle uh, knockoff here, which is includes the phase and the switch box, as well as the RX amp. You'll notice they followed the same layout and the physical design of the YCCC uh, design for the preamps. Hey, look, I like my preamps better, to be honest with you. You, but anyway, um, but look, uh, you can order here uh, from them. I haven't followed it through, but you know they have boards available for the switch uh, and phase units. This is the relay switcher, and and there's another board here for the uh, for the phase box. Uh, you know, and, and the full design and how to do it. So look, I encourage you to go and see them too if you. Um, if you want to build a whole unit, but you know, having said all that, you know uh, these uh, these boards, you know uh, these high Z amplifiers can represent the building blocks for all kinds of directive antennas. Lots of different uh, uh, arrays can be built with these short verticals, and perhaps you know you can use these amps for um, for other things as well. Anyway, hopefully that's uh, helpful to you guys. Uh, let me know if there's anything missing, if there's links uh, that aren't working or this isn't working for you. I'll maybe try and help you out. Uh, good luck. Hey, this is Steve, V6WZ.